The scripture reading is from Exodus chapter 16, verses 4 through 5. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. The word of God for the people of God. Would you pray with me? Now let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful anthem that was, and how beautiful for this day. I love this day. This is World Communion Sunday when we celebrate our unity with brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world. That's what all the special decor is about. And it's a powerful reminder to us. Sometimes I think we get, we get focused on who we are right here. And today we remember that people in Africa and people in Australia and people in Europe are all coming to the table and all are welcome. And in Christ, we are one, as if we were all sitting at the same table. It was interesting that my Lord's Prayer series wound up with the, the phrase today about bread, give us this day our daily bread. This is a day when we come and have bread together. And I love bread, don't you? I mean, I love bread. I used to make all of our bread. Um, I love the way it feels in your hands when you knead it. I would make it for our family for many years. I made almost all the bread that we used. I, I don't use a bread machine. I, I, don't, I haven't made any in a long time, but that kneading thing is so satisfying. And then shaping it and putting it in a bowl and watching it rise and punching it down and watching it rise and putting it in the oven. And then that heavenly smell just invades the whole living space. And then when it's done, you pull it out and put a big old slab of real butter on it and yum, yum, yum. It, bread is the ultimate comfort food. <laughs> and it is a core necessity for life. In many areas of the world, it's all people eat, you know? And there is a sense in which no matter how poor you are in many nations of the world, if you have enough bread, you have enough of everything. And with all that said, I just say to you that when I get to this phrase of the Lord's Prayer, it's hard for me because I hate asking anybody for anything, even asking God for bread. Is there anybody else here who has that kind of independent spirit? That's how I was raised. I was raised on a ranch in West Texas, and we were taught to be ruggedly independent, to work diligently, and to take care of ourselves. And the message there was I was supposed to make my own bread or make the money that allowed me to buy the bread. <laughs> And I think that is one of the great hazards of our great American way. That kind of rugged independence is a high value in this country. And that, that you know, we, we kind of feel like we should not ever need anything from anybody else ever. And so I don't like asking for my daily bread, even from God. Because what comes to me is, shouldn't I be able to bake my own. And one of the, I think that is one of the greatest obstacles that I encounter on my spiritual journey is that lack of, of desire to receive from other people, the lack of desire to receive even from God. Now we've been talking about this prayer for a while, and so we've talked about many things. We've talked about how important the prayer is, that it is not a test of our faith, but a way that we shape our faith. 
We've talked about how every phrase is just packed with meaning and that if we are willing to pray it and let it shape us, it will transform us into the very image of Christ. But I think one of the things that happens to us, especially in this country, is that we forget where our bread comes from. And we think that it is solely from our labor. I think that's the myth of my independence, is that I, I think it comes from me. And I need to be reminded. There was a little seven-year-old boy who went with his dad to the grocery store and they came home and unloaded all the groceries and he fixed dinner and then they sat down to eat and, and he said, that's time for us to give thanks. Let's bless our food. And the little boy looked at him quizzically and he said, you know, why are we thanking God for this food that we just bought at Fry's? And his father looked at him and, and he picked up a roll and he said, well, where did this come from? And the little boy said, it came from Fry's. <laughs> And where did they get it, said the man. Well, I guess they got it from the bakery. <laughs> and where did the bakery get it? Well, they made it. And what did they make it from? Well, they, they made it from flour. <laughs> and where did that flour come from? And the little boy is starting to get a little ticked off. He says, well, they made it from wheat. And where did the wheat come from? Well, farmers grew it. And where did the farmers get it to grow it? And, and, and they said they, he grew it from seed. And, and the man said, so where did the seed come from? And the little boy got it. And he said, well, I guess he got it from God. And the, the father said, that's why we thank God for this food that we just bought at Fry's, because everything comes from God. And we pray this prayer to remind ourselves that everything comes from God. All bread is from God. Without God, there is no bread. Without God, there is no life. And we pray this prayer to break down those walls of pride, those walls of independence that, that we build when we say, well, I, I can do this. I'm, I can do it on my own. I don't need any help. Or maybe we say to ourselves, if I'm not managing to do this, there must be something wrong with me. We pray this prayer to break that down and to remind ourselves that we are dependent on God every day, every moment, every year of our lives. We're dependent on God for bread and for breath and for life. And we pray it to remind ourselves that our God loves to feed us. This book is full of stories about how God loves to feed God's children. The first big one happens out in the wilderness and they're wandering for 40 years and it's hard and they kind of run out of food and God begins to provide them food every single day. Every day they get up and there's this white flaky stuff on the ground it's called manna, which means, what is it? Because they don't know what it is. But what it is is food from God. And every day for all those 40 years, there's enough food on the ground. Except on the day before the Sabbath, there's enough food on the ground for them to gather for two days so that they don't have to work on the Sabbath. God provides and provides. Now, the prophet Isaiah, as, as he talked and, and brought words from God about the coming day of the Messiah, wrote these wonderful words, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you will have no money. Come, buy, and eat, even if you have no money. And then we get to the New Testament and Jesus, and he's out one afternoon, and he's looking at 5,000 hungry men and their wives and their children, and the other disciples are saying, send them away, they need to get something to eat. And Jesus says, uh-uh, we're gonna feed them here, right here, right now, and there'll be plenty. And there was, and they all got fed and there was plenty left over. Our God loves to feed us. And yet we don't want to admit ever that we are fragile, dependent creatures that can't do it on our own. <laughs> Now, 
And what we can know from all these stories that our God cares about us and gives us what we need, even the mundane bread that we need for every day of our lives. One of the things about this phrase that is so difficult is that it, you notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say, give me this day my daily bread. It's give us our daily bread. So when we pray this prayer, we're not just praying for our own house. We're praying for all Christians everywhere. We're praying for all of God's children. And that makes it especially relevant on this World Communion Sunday. People in desperate parts of the world, we're praying for them too. Give us this day our daily bread. And that should remind us that we're not to hoard our bread because it really belongs to everybody. It belongs to our brothers and sisters as much as it does to us. And there is a sense in which we have a profound responsibility to share. And there's a sense in which we should never really be content when, when we are really well fed and we have brothers and sisters who are hungry in other parts of the world. St. Basil the Great, who was one of the early church fathers, had these wonderful words. The bread that is spoiling in your house belongs to the hungry. The shoes that are mildewing under your bed belong to those who have none. The clothes that are stored away in your trunk belong to those who are naked. And the money that depreciates in your treasury belongs to the poor. Now, that's a profound call to a different way of life. And it's kind of ironic that in this country, because of our great concern with weight, we probably would pray this prayer, you know, give us this day our daily low-calorie, high-protein, vitamin-enriched bread. But people in poor countries just need a lot of calories. That's what they need. Isn't that distorted somehow? When we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we agree to this responsibility that we have for others' real physical needs. And we kind of agree to offer our lives to others in, in a very real and tangible way. I don't know whether you can remember back in the 70s with the hippies, the way they referred to money. Does anybody think, how they, do you have any bread? You got any bread, you know? Bread was money. And that's a good fit in this sense here because this is not just about loaves of bread. This is about everything, isn't it? It's about all of our material resources. We are asking God to provide us what we need for this day. But we are also praying that God will provide for all people everywhere. We're agreeing not to just share our bread, but everything that we have, so that all of God's children have what they need. And that's one way that the kingdom of God that we talked about a little, a few weeks ago, that that, that is defined. The kingdom of God is that way of being when everybody has what they need to live and live well. And that means that this is a hard prayer. And I find I don't really want to pray it. And I find I don't really mean it, you know? I, I personalize it, I mean it for me, but I just really have a hard time meaning it for everybody. And then you look at the phrase again and you see those words, this day and daily. Give us this day our daily bread. I grew up you know, we, in a little town and on a ranch, and the, you know, the ranch was 21 miles out of town, and that little town was 30 miles from a grocery store. And so once a month, we would go to town, we'd go 30 miles to Alpine, and we would do lots of things, and at the end of our day, we would shop for groceries. And we would fill up two, three, four carts sometimes, and we would fill up the whole car with food, and we would take it home, and we would fill up the freezer and the pantry, and that would be a month's worth of food for six kids and our two parents. And that sensibility got built into me. I still want to go to the grocery store and fill up two baskets full and take them home and fill up the freezer and fill up the pantry. 
because when that's all full, you can feel secure, right? You feel like you have what you need and you don't have to worry. This prayer challenges that desire of mine. So I know. It says, it, it says you should ask for what you need today. Give us this day only. I want to say, give me enough for a month, God, and then I can feel good, and then, we don't, then I won't have to worry, and I can spend more time with you. And God says to me, depend on me every day. Just know that I'll give it to you every day. And I say, mm. And as a sign of my love, God says, depend on me every day, every day. The prayer teaches us to ask for this moment and leave the rest to God. Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. I don't like that, do you? I mean, who's going to worry about tomorrow if I don't do it? I find that just so hard. There was a, uh, Gregory of Nyssa wrote, God says to you, as it were, he who gives you the day will give you also the things necessary for the day. Who causes the sun to rise? Who makes the darkness of the night to disappear? Who shows you the rays of light? Who revolves the sky so that the source of light is above the earth? Does he who gives you so great things need your help to supply for the needs of your body. It's just so hard. We ask for daily bread. And when God spoke to the Israelites, he said, I'll give you enough for today, and on the day before the Sabbath, enough for two days. And that's all you're together, is enough for one day. And some of them were like me, they wanted to fill up the whole pantry, and so they went out and they gathered more. And the, everything that they gathered over what they needed for a day, or the two days of the Sabbath, they, when they looked at it again, it was completely spoiled and full of worms. Because God didn't want them to have it all at one time. God wanted to give it to them day by day. This, this prayer for bread also, I think, pulls us back to pray for things that we really need, for necessities. I mean, do you ever find yourself praying for things that you don't really need, but that would be nice? I mean, it would be nice. There's so many things would be nice. There's an old song that I don't even know how old it is. Oh, Lord, won't you give me a Mercedes Benz? That's one kind of prayer. Oh, Lord, won't you give me a Mercedes Benz? And this prayer says, don't, don't do that. That's silly. Just pray for what you need. Don't pray for wealth. Don't pray for a bigger house or status or a bigger car. I mean, the televangelists may suggest that you should, but I'd say go back to the Bible and to the Lord's Prayer and, and realize that you just need to pray for what you need. Just pray for our most basic human needs and trust that God will provide them, not in advance, but as they are needed. You know, in, a, in a few moments, we're going to enact this phrase of the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. We're going to come forward like little children with our hearts in our hands, Hands outstretched, asking for the bread of life to sustain us in this day. And our God, who loves to feed God's children, will meet us in that moment and meet that desire of our hearts and give us his very body to be our bread. And I just say, what better sign do we need that we really can count on God to give us this day our daily bread? Amen. My song of response is a song of, of surrendering to God. The title is Take Our Bread. It's from the hymnal, page number 640. But it really is more than take our bread. It's here we are, and we are yours, Lord. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable as we sing it together. Mm -hmm. 